it's Ella from Spline. Characters can be vivid and charming elements to our designs, and it's great to see them, but it's even better when we can interact with them. So today, let's take a look at the different ways we can bring life to this cute 3D robot by making it interactive in Spline. We're going to explore adorable interactions like having it reach for our mouse, follow and face our cursor, change colors when clicked, and more. And you'll be surprised, the process is quite simple. If you'd like to follow along, you can remix this robot. The link is in the description below. Let's get started. So let's start with something very simple, and that would be the look at event, which will cause an object or character to face our cursor, hence the name. All you have to do is select the object or character, create a new event, add the look at event, and that's basically it. You can adjust settings like the target, aka what it's looking at, add damping, and adjust the direction. But once it is applied, it will start working right away. And a cool thing to keep in mind is you can apply this event to just one part of the body or object that you're working with. And in the case of this character, I'm going to only apply this to the head, so that's the only thing that's going to be moving. And now, we can make this robot headbang. On to the next example. Let's make it so when we hover the cursor over the robot, it simply just increases in size. Select the character, create a second state, and here we're going to change the size. Make sure to hold down Shift and Option as you scale so it scales proportionally and stays in the center of our composition. Now we will create a new event and select the mouse hover event. And if we hit play, absolutely nothing will happen because we need to add a transition. So let's go back and add a transition. Let's open it up so we can select our corresponding states. And now if we hit play, as you can see, our character is growing every time we hover over them. Pretty cute. But you know what? This could be a little more dramatic with some small adjustments. So let's go back and adjust our time to 0.5 so it's faster. And see? Way more dramatic. But one final touch would be to give this little guy a little more of a bounce, which we can simply do by switching ease and out for a spring. See that little bounce? Pretty cute. We can also apply the same event to affect a specific area of our character's body. For example, with our robot buddy, we can have them grow as their legs are being revealed. In one state, my robot will be on the ground, and then it will reveal its legs. We apply the same mouse hover event again and repeat the same process. And see, we really are bringing this little guy to life. Now, let's try another one of these events. How about mouse press? This one activates as I hold down my mouse. Let's use the same animation as we just applied to the robot's leg. Now, all I have to do is click to activate the animation, and until I release my mouse, it's not going to return to its initial state. Next, let's try the mouse down event with the same transition. So if we go to the preview mode, nothing's going to happen until we click on the object. So let's click on our robot pal, and cool, it works. Now let's quickly turn on the toggle here so when we click on the character, it returns back to its initial position. Nice. Now it seems our robot friend is doing a bit of aerobics. If we go back to inspect the settings here in Trigger, we have two options. You can click on the object specifically, or you can even just click anywhere in the scene. Meaning if we do select this, no matter where in the scene you click, it will trigger the action. Cool. Now let's move on to the next exercise. Let's make our character change color when we're hovering over these buttons with our cursor. What I want to change is just the color of its body. 
So I can choose the corresponding layer. It's really important to ensure that the materials are not linked, so you are affecting only the object you are selecting and not the material asset that will affect any other objects that it's linked to. So I am going to quickly click on this unlink icon here. We are going to create a new state and name it after the corresponding color. So let's start with blue. And now I can go to my materials and change the color to blue. Looking good. Now, if I click on the base state, you will see that I keep the white version, but when I go to this new state, it's going to change the color to blue. And then I'm gonna create another state for pink, name that pink, adjust the body as well. And you can see why it can be very important to correctly name our states here because it will help us later on when we want to trigger the animation and it's going to help us identify these colors more quickly. And then I'm just going to keep duplicating and adding more colors here. All right, done. Now that we have all of our colors applied to our states, let's start with yellow and create that button that we hover over to trigger that color change. I am going to create something similar to a button next to my character here using an ellipse shape. Okay, it looks pretty good. And I'm going to name this ellipse shape yellow, no surprise, to match that corresponding color. Now I'm going to copy and paste the same yellow color I used on the character, just so it matches. Now let's trigger that color change. So select the button and let's create a new mouse hover event. By default, the same ellipse is selected as the target. This means that my action will only affect this object. But what we want here is when we hover over the button, the color of the character changes, not the ellipse. So in target, all we need to do is select the body shape layer of our robot. making sure to have yellow selected so that it matches the same button. Now let's go back to our event and adjust the transition and make sure to select the corresponding color in my second transition. There we go. Now if we go back to play mode, and bring the mouse to the button. Ta-da, our character changes to yellow. Pretty simple. Since I am using the mouse hover event here, it returns back to its original color once I remove the cursor from the button. Now, I feel that my button is very static and maybe a little boring, so what we can do is add a small animation so we can change the size when we bring our cursor closer. So let's create a new state, and I'm going to reduce the size of our button just a little bit. This is going to give us that feeling of like a click. Let's go back to the hover event here and create a new transition. In target, we will keep it on the yellow ellipse and adjust the transition to have both states applied. And now if we go to play mode, every time I get closer to my ellipse, not only does the character change color, but we also have that small and subtle animation of the button. So now I have a button here for each color, so let's add the same transition and event to each as we did for the yellow button. It's pretty easy to do. Just copy the event from the yellow button here by right clicking. And now we can choose this blue button and right click again and paste our event. So let's open up the event and we just need to make a few adjustments in the transition. So change the target to the blue button. and the state here to the blue state. Now if we go to play mode, if we hover over this 
yellow button, my character turns yellow, but then if we head over to the blue, our character is going to change blue. You can repeat this process as many times as you want, and I'm just going to quickly apply this to our pink and purple colors. And done! Now all of our buttons work correctly at making our character change these different colors. You can easily edit the event that activates these actions, so let's say instead of using a mouse hover event, you can use a mouse down event instead. And you can also create a small animation for our robot friend here so they can move while their color's changing. Now let's create a fun interaction where we change the facial expression of our character. First, I'll add a texture to my character's face, which is this cube inside of the robot's body here. So if I select the face layer and go to the material panel, I'm going to add an image layer. Next, I am going to upload this image, which is nothing more than just this vector illustration of this cute expression. Next, I adjust the image settings here, tweaking the scale and offset until it looks just about right. Okay, perfect. This time, for each expression, I added these emoji buttons. I uploaded the various images and expressions to the same face layer in the same way as we did before. So just as we did with the colors, I am doing with the image layer. But this time in the materials panel, I'm ensuring that I only have the expression corresponding to that state, 100% opacity. Then I repeat the process, creating a transition for each button that triggers the corresponding facial expression. So pretty easy to apply, just like we did with the colors. And I would say this looks pretty great. And you can combine this with the look at event to create this really fun interactive robot. Great, now this looks even more dynamic. If you'd like to add sound effects to this for an additional detail, you can totally do that, but for now, I'm gonna keep it as is. Aw, uh, he has so many emotions, and people say robots don't have feelings. And of course, you can go so much further with your characters and create a whole mini game in Spawn. You can apply the game controls feature to your character, make their legs move like this as if they're walking. Let me know in the comments if you'd be interested in a tutorial explaining how to make this robot and other characters walk. All right, that was really fun. We hope you enjoyed this tutorial on how you can take your characters and make them easily interactive with Spline. Check out the Spline community if you're looking for some more 3D inspiration and follow for more. See you next time, bye.